Hi and welcome to another RetroNerds install video. We're going to look at the Nintendo 3DS, one that's been modded for Homebrew, uh, and how you can use QR codes to install games over Wi-Fi uh, using RetroNerds as your backing store. So today I'm on my Linux desktop. Um, this is what I normally develop things from. I switch over to Windows for my videos, but I'll just run it from Linux today, mostly because all the commands are the same no matter what the OS. Um, But SSH into your uh, RetroNAS device, like always. Um, and again, same thing if you're on the Windows command line, you can just run SSH from the command line to get in there. Run RetroNAS the same old way. Okay, in RetroNAS, um, you can go to the Install Things menu and you can choose the Lighty HTTP web server. So this will install just a regular a uh, very lightweight web server. So if you're familiar with things like um, Nginx or Apache or those sorts of things, similar uh, concept, but this is a, a much lighter weight version. Um, now I'm not going to actually install that directly. You can do that if you don't want the uh, Nintendo 3DS part that we're going to look at later. You can just install this uh, and it will export your entire RetroNAS share over HTTP. Uh, and that will let really old browsers uh, browse it because it's all HTTP 1.0 compliant, just lists everything as files. Um, so browsers, you know, right back to like uh, cl classic Mac OS, um, Unix systems, um, any anything really that had a browser, Amiga, that kind of thing, they'll all be able to browse it and copy files. You obviously can't write, you can't push back to RetroNAS, uh, but if you had something like Samba or uh, NetATalk installed, they'll let you... Uh, push things from another computer uh, and then you can download them via a web browser which is really handy. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the Nintendo 3DS install option here um, and that's going to do a lot of the hard work for us. It's going to figure out that the web browser isn't installed, that that's missing and it's going to go and install that for us. Alright, well, so let's do that. So behind the scenes of RetroNAS uh, is a bit of software called Ansible. Uh, and Ansible is a configuration management tool. It, it uh, understands how to install things and how to put files in places and whatnot. So you tell Ansible what you want uh, in some code and you can see that on my GitHub repository if you want to look at how that works uh, and it figures out what to do. So this particular Ansible playbook uh, knows that it has to install the web browser, the web server, sorry, first uh, before the 3DS component can be installed. So that's what it's doing here. It's installing Lighty. So again, if you want to install the web server part, just go do that direct. If you want to install the 3DS part, install that and it'll figure out that the web server is missing and it'll go and install that for you. Okay, that's all done. Let's have a look what that looks like. So any old web browser will work. I've got Google Chrome, obviously. You can use whatever you like. You can use new browsers, old browsers, back to Mosaic and Netscape and that kind of thing if you want. Uh, just browse to your the IP address of your retro NAS device, your Raspberry Pi. And what you'll see uh, is the entire contents of your retro NAS device. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because the font is a bit small. Just blow that up. Um, so all the things are here. I, I've done some previous videos. Uh, I've done some PS2 videos and a few um, videos where I've, I've shared things between Macs and Windows machines. Like if I click on these, you'll probably see the contents of these files. So these were previously written in my Samba videos. So likewise, you can browse your RetroNAS share uh, by installing the Samba component and browsing that through anything that supports Samba. Um, Linux, Mac, Windows all support Samba. Um, or SMB. Uh, likewise, you can install Apple Talk uh, or NetA Talk and you can browse it from a Mac. You can install an FTP server, browse it via FTP, whatever you like. There's heaps of different options to get stuff onto this. Uh, obviously, HTTP is read only, so you can only read things. But um, what you'll notice uh, the most important bit here is this 3DS folder that's been created. 
Uh, and inside that 3DS folder are two other folders. There's a CIA folder and a QR folder. So a CIA folder, this is the internal packaging type for the Nintendo 3DS. And this is, we're going to put some CIA files in here. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll run the little script and the script will generate QR codes that pop up in here. So that's kind of the, uh, the gist of what we're going to do next. Okay, so I've just uh, browsed to my RetroNAS device via the SMB protocol. So if you're in Windows, you can just browse via the, uh, the Windows Explorer. If you're in Mac, you can do the same sort of thing. I'm just on Linux, same, same thing. Um, I've got my 3DS folder here on my RetroNAS and in, in there are my CIA and QR folders. I'm gonna go into the CIA folder. Uh, I've got a collection of CIA files here. Now, um, what's interesting about these is that they've got these weird symbols in them. Uh, that will work. Uh, you can definitely copy these across uh, and they'll sort of work. What I recommend is just renaming them to something sensible. Um, you know, spaces and special characters and things, again, that, they'll work, um, but sometimes you just get weird characters that kind of mess up uh, for the web server component. They don't like that too much. Uh, so if you've got those sorts of uh, files downloaded with, uh, you know, these weird trademark symbols, which I think is a pretty hilarious thing to put in a, uh, a file name, um, you know, just rename those to something sensible if that helps out. Uh, anywho, from here, let's jump on the uh, Pi, the RetroNAS device, and see what that looks like. Okay, so head to the Run Tools and Scripts section. and Run the Nintendo 3DS QR code generator for FBI Homebrew. Uh, now, this has run really fast, obviously, because there's only one file that it's found. Uh, you can put as many files in here as you want. If you want to put 100 of these things, go ahead and put 100 of these things. Um, if you delete CIA files from the CIA directory, it will also clean up the QR code directory. So if you want to clean up after yourself, after you've done an install and you don't need the file lying around anymore, you can do that too. Go back to our SMB share. Um, this is our CIA directory. So if we go up one directory to the 3DS directory, there's our QR code directory. Uh, now in there is a HTML file and a PNG. So we can open up the PNG and have a look at it. Uh, and you'll see the QR code. Now you can scan that directly if you want. You don't need to um, look at that through a web browser if you don't want to. Anything that can literally display that QR code uh, is useful to you. However, let's look at it in the web browser anyway. So in the web browser, there's our CIA folder. There's our Super Metroid CIA. In the QR folder, there's our PNG, which is the QR uh, image itself and a HTML file. Now the HTML file doesn't do much uh, really exciting. All it does is it tells you what the QR code actually embeds. It's just a bit of a troubleshooting step. Um, so this is the actual URL that's going to be sent to um, our 3DS when we scan this. So, so you can just double check. Double slashes are okay. They happen sometimes because you know I'm terrible at coding, um, but that's fine. There's, there's nothing uh, problematic about that. That just gets interpreted as a single slash by the system. So uh, this IP address should be pulled out correctly. Now that's mine, yours is going to be different. Um, that'll be pulled out of the configuration for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and this QR code just gets generated here. Now, uh, if you view the, Q the QR code by itself, that works okay. I have found with the Nintendo 3DS um, that a black background confuses the camera a little bit. It really likes high contrast. So the HTML with the white background sometimes works better. Um, at regular size, it's about that big. Um, but again, you can scroll in and zoom if that makes it easier for your Nintendo 3DS to see it. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch cameras over to my phone just so we can see the whole process from the 3DS. Uh, we'll try and load this thing on the 3DS and see what it looks like. Okay, just sitting here at my kitchen table on my laptop, um, have my, uh, oh hey, you missed my face. Um, I have my uh, new Nintendo 2DS. This is the um, 2DS model. Uh, not the 3DS model, but they're all the same pretty much. Anything that's got Wi-Fi and a camera and the 3DS homebrew will work. Um, so I will just wait for that to power up. Okay, there we go. So uh, obviously this thing's been... I might turn that volume down a bit. Although, cool Super Metroid music. Uh, because Super Metroid's the best game ever. So, um, yeah, it's got a lot of different... 
um, tools and utilities on here, but the FBI installer is the one that we want. Um, if you go look at my wiki on my GitHub, uh, it tells you how to get that FBI installer um, and do the homebrew stuff. I'm not gonna go through that. That's something you can investigate for yourself, but this is all assumed you have this stuff ready to go. The first thing you wanna do, uh, obviously, is get your Wi-Fi set up. Uh, so head over to settings. Again, you can use the D-pad or you can uh, just touch the screen. And within the settings, hit your internet settings here, your connection settings, uh, and then set up a new connection or edit an existing one. So that's just sort of standard Wi-Fi stuff. I won't go into that too deep. Um, choose your access point and your password and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it can do a little internet test for you to test that it can get to the internet. We don't care about the internet. We're only on our local network, obviously. Um, but that's enough to get on there and then browse your, uh, your share um, when it comes to the, the actual install process. Anywho, once you're done with that, hit the home button. Oh, no, you can't. Um, you will have to back out of there. Uh, to get back to the main menu. Slowly but surely. And then over to the FBI installer. So let's go into the FBI thingy. Um, now you want to scroll down to this remote install. So obviously you can touch this touch screen uh, or you can use the D-pad, whatever you like, A button for remote install. Um, you've got a whole bunch of options there. So scan QR code is the one you want. So I'll point the camera down a bit as I select that. And what you'll see is the camera up top kind of wake up. Oh no, it's down the bottom, there we go. All right, how do I do this? If I, so I'm, I'm not gonna point fully at the QR code because as soon as I do, it'll pick it up. So if you get the QR code in focus, it's pretty much straight away that it picks it up. Um, and it will ask up the top here. Now that's the URL that you saw uh, before. So it's confirmed that it's picked up the correct URL. Um, and down the bottom here, it says, do you want to install the, the uh, scan QR code? So let's say yes, you can hit A or you can touch on the screen, whichever one's easier for you. And it's gonna grab that uh, like a Wi-Fi. So uh, often a little bit of a pause while it turns on the Wi-Fi. It tends to turn that off most of the time when nothing's in use. And once it's connected to Wi-Fi, it's gonna grab it. So that's about the maximum speed you'll get. I'm sitting really close to my access points, just sort of behind me. So it's not lightning fast. Um, something to remember if you're gonna install like one of these massive, um, you know, three, four plus gigabyte uh, 3DS games, the big 3D ones. I'm just installing a little virtual console one, so it's nice and lightweight. Uh, anyway, so once it's installed, uh, hit any button. You can just hit the home button now to go back to the main menu and you'll find a new gift. Oh my God, that's so exciting. All right, so let's go to it. You can either, again, so up the top here, it says that there's a gift. Um, you can either tap the button, the, the icon, or you can press your A button uh, to unwrap it. See if I can get the whole thing in frame here. And it will unwrap the game. Look at that, Super Metroid. And then uh, play it. So yeah, we're gonna suspend FBI, obviously, because it's running in the background. Here's my face again. Hi, everybody. Super reflective screen, isn't it? Look at my giant bald head. All right, there we go. So that's running. Big smile from me. Everything's working well. Um, and that's your game. So once this whole process uh, is done, uh, and yeah, we'll close that. Uh, I've got the little 3D icon spinning there, no? Okay, there we go. Uh, anyway, once this whole process is done, uh, you don't need to keep anything around on the web server side. It's all on the 3DS, ready to go, uh, and you can pretty much install any game you like that way. So uh, happy 3DSing.